Tigers lose their fifth straight ball game with a 9-3 to loss to the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto's home opener. Not a new ballpark, still the Rogers Center, but kind of improved ballpark, right? A lot of new stuff, new dimensions, fun night in Canada, rough night for Detroit. We're going to talk about it today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team. Every single day, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, an, the official sportsbook of Lockdown, rather. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. All righty. Tigers lose in embarrassing fashion yet again with a 9-3 to loss to the Toronto Blue Jays, our friends north of the border. Um, I know I have some Canadian uh, (laughs) friends up north that are Tigers fans. In in eras like this, I am sad for you that 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 is the decision uh, or or that is how you were raised or whatnot. Um, There have been some eras in the past where it's been much better to be a Tigers fan than a Jays fan for sure. But the last seven years, tough to make that argument for sure. But uh, thank you for, for tuning in as always. You know, this this is oh, it's a rough one. It's another rough one. We're two and eight. Have you heard that out loud yet? We're two and eight. Ten games into the season, two and eight record. Just let that sink in. That's rough. Um, and, and you know, th- this first six weeks, like this was always going to be rough. This was always going to be really really rough. And it's it's. 10 games and it's the first 10 games of the season and it's just this team refuses to give any optimism to its fans uh pretty much around every corner and every turn just uh this this fan base is begging for something to to hold on to that they can go like oh look like this this might actually you know bring me joy one day this might be something that that is going to make this team good and whatnot and uh nights like tonight like again like it's just around every corner it's it's like a prank it's like oh you're up three nothing the opposing pitcher had a 40 pitch inning 42 three pitch inning well just kidding (laughs) not not i'm not even like red in the face mad i'm not the kind of like i'm not going to be able to get like red in the face screaming mad like whatever 90 100 times this season like I'm not that that's <laughs> for my own sake and sanity I'm not going to be able to do that but nights like tonight it's just deflating you know that's probably going to happen more than anything else just just takes the wind out of you don't it it's a rough one because it was close and you you you, you well I'm not going to speak for you I I for a split second thought, Oh my goodness, maybe we'll win a baseball game. Then that I was, I was reminded, obviously, um, let's talk about this game though. Okay. Let, let's stop the theatrics and and being overly dramatic, which I tend to do. And and let's, uh, let's, let's talk about this game though. Cause there is not even trying to like sugarcoat it or tell you something that's not true. There, there is always, I believe, something you can take from a game and and look at and go, okay, well, this is something we can build on or whatnot. Most games, I guess I shouldn't say every game. And there is a couple, especially in Matt Manning's side of uh, the ball that I think you can take out of not a lot on the offensive side of the ball, which is something that I'm sure will be a theme again this year, as it was last year. Uh, I want to start off with park dimensions. I think they turned this place into an absolute launching pad. I like that right center field, we talked about it on the on the preview with um with the Lockdown Jays crossover we did yesterday. 
I think that right center field is going to be a launching pad. And I think this stadium is going to be a home run pad. Like th- th- that was like in the first inning, you noticed it, right? There was a fastball that Bo Bichette in the first inning took in on the hands and just like muscled the opposite way. And it almost went to the warning track. Like, and I immediately I was like, oh, okay, this is they they brought the walls in. Like we brought them in a little bit to where like it's not even gonna make that much of a difference. They brought them walls in. Let me tell you, those things, th- those things came all like way, way in, you know, infield in, you know, weak hitter at the plate, outfield in kind of stuff, man. Like that they they brought them way, way in. And so uh, I, I am very interested. Like the AL East is just a bunch of launching pads. And I guess the the Blue Jays were like, well, we're the only team that doesn't have kind of a, a home run centered park. Let's change that and play to the rest of the division. So we'll see what happens. But th- there's going to be some fun ball games uh, up, up north in Toronto, let me tell you. Um, so that was kind of the first thing that I that I noticed just right off rip. But if we are going chronologically, let's talk Matt Manning. First things first. I'm saying first things first. We're like seven minutes into the show. Matt, Man- <laughs> as if anything could even think about going right for this baseball team. Um, Matt Manning fractured the fifth metata- metatarsal. Metatarsal? Metatarsal. Sound it out, baby. Yeah. Fifth metatarsal. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but if I'm not, I'm taking credit. In his right foot on the last comebacker, that was literally the final out he recorded. So he gets a comebacker off the foot. It bounces to Torkelson. Matt Manning runs to to first base and gets the final out like himself and, and then walks off the field, not limping really. So we'll see what happens. They interviewed him after the game, and his response was, quote, it's just a foot, followed by stating that he doesn't have time to be injured. So we will see what happens uh, with Matt Manning. He made, had another quote later that Petzold, uh, Evan Petzold of uh, the Free tweeted out where he, he basically said, like, oh, you know, maybe I just miss a start or take a week off and then see how the foot feels. He really does not want to miss time, but – and I'm not a doctor. I, I didn't even know what a metatarsal was until 15 minutes ago. So, like, I certainly am not the person to ask about the timeline for this injury. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, if you're not part of the, the late night squad that listens right at midnight uh, and you're listening tomorrow on, on Wednesday, uh, then maybe the, the news is already out and, and there's already a, a, a timeline that's out there to the public. But uh, at the time of this recording, which is immediately following the game, I do not have that information, and I am not a doctor, so I'm not even going to try and guess on how long that means he's out for. But uh, fracturing anything, especially in a foot as a pitcher, seems like a big deal. So we'll see what happens. Um, Yeah, super exciting stuff, super fun. Let's talk about the start itself. Uh, I, I do think that while this wasn't the greatest start in, in the world by any stretch, uh, I, I do actually think that there is some good we can take out of this Matt Manning start, and I, I genuinely believe that. So we'll get into that right after I tell you all about our friends over at FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays, and Tigers baseball are back. There's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss out on the chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, you just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked on to sign up. FanDuel, an official sports par- betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Uh, the, the consistent support and numbers of this show, despite the product on the field. Uh, I am, I'm internally and forever grateful. So thank you all so much. It really does mean the world to me. And I love y'all. Um, I'm glad that we, um, I, I love the community that we have here. 
just get to talk ball and uh, wait for something to go right pretty much. So uh, let's talk Matt Manning. Let's talk about this start itself. We'll get into kind of the, the nitty gritty of it. Um, first off, he's the first pitcher this season to re- pitch six innings. He's the first starter in the, on the Detroit Tigers to go six innings in a start. We've had, I think, two or one or two, five and two thirds, then like two or th- two, I think, five and a third, and then a whole lot of four and two thirds and fives. So there you go. It wasn't a quality start because he gave up four runs, right? Six innings pitched and three earned runs is a quality start. So just misses out on that, but only one run more. It really wasn't the worst start in the world. And anytime Matt Manning's given up home runs, like, and the back to back, just the way it happened and everything like that. Like, obviously fans are not going to be happy and people are going to clamor and complain and stuff. And that, and that like justified like that, that really frustrating there. Um, but this was, kind of two different sides of the coin here that analogy doesn't make sense but really he he had some really like high points in this start and some really low points in this start uh if we want to start with the bad right do you want the good news first or the bad news first the bad was that the fastball command was really kind of brutal in this game and we've said dating back to spring training that his fastball command is vital to his success kind of on a night to night basis. Um, it was kind of all over the place in this one. He was not only missing outside of the zone, which is frustrating enough to not be able to paint anything and every single fastball you try to hit a corner on is a ball that that's already not great and, and unbelievably frustrating, but in the zone he would miss and it would be right down the middle. And any, obviously the two home runs that were given up there in the, uh, the bottom of the fifth inning, Springer's was an absolute rocket. Um, so, so like those were like, obviously not great. Uh, he hung one slider at one point as well, but we'll, we'll talk about the slider later. Um, so just did not have his stuff with his fastball, like, and, and like watch the mitt, right? What the, the catcher is calling, right? Like the catcher knows what's up. Watch the glove in a Matt Manning start. Watch where the glove is. When it's especially in fastball counts and and see how close he gets to it. In this start, it was not even in the same zip code. He, he, we were aiming high on fastballs and it was below the knees for a ball. We were aiming low and it was right down the middle, all over the place with the heater. Just really, and and the velocity, like, yeah, it was 92, 93, which I know comes up pretty much every Matt Manning start. Like, if if you're not used to it by now, I don't know what to tell you. Like, he's not going to throw 98 ever again. It's not going to happen. It happened when he was in the minors. He got hurt. He came back. Didn't throw as hard. I, I don't know what to tell you. Well, you can keep complaining about it if you want, but, like, it's, it's not going to change anything. He's going to be this, like, 93-ish mile an hour that when he really wants to can top out at 95, 96. I, I, I don't see that changing. And it doesn't need to change, most importantly. We talked about last season, or in the off season rather, when we did our – in spring – Geez, when we did our player profiles, uh, Matt Manning's fastball graded out last season as legitimately a a stellar pitch, like a really, really valuable and and productive pitch. So, it, it yes, like we can complain about the velocity all you want. It's really easy to to like do that, but it, it doesn't. It, it's okay at ninety three when it's located well. In this game, it just was not located very well. So. That's that's kind of the low end of this start, and, and that's what got him into most of his trouble in this ball game. Now, the other thing was the slider. The slider in this ball game was sensational, outside of one bad one. Okay, he threw it 17 times and was either a called strike or a whiff. 10 of those 17 times, it's a 59% CSW percentage called strikes plus whiffs. Uh and that's a great sign because the other thing along with forcing fastball command, there are two other points that we always bring up with Manning. Heater command, how good is that slider going to be? How good can it actually be? And then the third thing, which we'll get into in a second, is what is the third pitch? So in this game, the slider, the, the bona fide number two on most nights for him, it, it is was great. That's the wording. I don't know why. I, I just forgot what I was saying there. Was really, really solid. Okay? It, it was a really good pitch. Now, that leads us into the curveball, 
which was actually the second most thrown pitch in this game. That's what I was going to say a few seconds ago. Weird, weird, kind of all over the place outing. And the curveball wasn't phenomenal. Last season, the changeup was uh, kind of the one he would throw out there generally to try to be like the legitimate third pitch, but he didn't have too much success with it. And so he threw 20 curveballs in this game. And as the start got deeper and deeper, they started rising and rising, which is never a good sign. I don't know if that's an extension problem, right? Not taking a big enough stride to the plate, uh, just letting go of the ball too early. I don't know what what the issue was with it. But, I mean, fatigue, clearly, because as the start went along, the curveball started rising and rising and rising uh, until there was one. I think it was Brandon Belt at the plate. He just threw like 50 curveballs at him, and all of them were belt high, just at like different parts of the plate. I'm sure that wasn't the plan. Um, so if it if he wants it to be the curveball as the third pitch, that's fine. But like we we need it located a lot better. We, we need it much more effective. It was not a very effective pitch. But I enjoy, not enjoy, I appreciate, that's the word, the fact that he's at least trying to throw one of his non-slider secondary pitches a lot to get in the groove to have a legitimate third pitch and it wasn't like it was blasted like all over the yard or anything the curveball in this game so we'll see something to keep an eye on is it going to be the curve is it going to be the change we don't know but in this game it was certainly the curveball um so yeah like uh again this this was a really really interesting start like the the two homers were obviously sucked um but as far as like reasons why the Tigers lost this baseball game, Matt Manning is nowhere close to the top of my list. Like n nowhere, even in the remote vicinity of the, the, the biggest reason why the Tigers lost this ball game. And he, this is a really good blue Jays lineup. One of the best lineups, not only in the American league, but in all of baseball. And again, he was a runaway from a quality start and, and held it together and kept the game close through six. OK, all all in all kept him in the game. Best lineup in baseball. Best start ever. No. Worst start ever. No. But you can probably take enough good out of this start to build on it going forward, assuming there is a forward to build on because apparently he fractured his fifth something or other in his foot. And now who knows how much time he's going to miss. So. Awesome stuff out of Detroit, as we're so accustomed to over the last seven years. Uh, let's talk bullpen. Only one reliever pitched in this ballgame. Mason Ingler, two innings pitched, four hits, five earned runs, one walk, four Ks. He has good stuff, and, and he looked really solid in the seventh. Okay? The seventh inning, he looked great. Sending him out for the eighth is the big thing that everyone's talking about. Um, I think... You have to assume that the reason why was you're coming off your last off day in a while. The Tigers don't have an off day for the foreseeable future. I think, like, don't quote me on this, but I think maybe the end of April. Like, legitimately, like, last day of April or first day of May is, like, maybe their next off day. So, you, you, got, you, you got a while. And game one of a series, you're already losing. Uh, I don't know. Like... I, I, I really do. It's a fine line. It's a real fine line. I, you have to assume, that's what I was saying, that, that you were saving the pen and that's why you wanted to go, A, to Ingler there because you know he can pitch multiple innings. He did in Houston, did a great job. Um, but when it started crumbling, you're then faced with a decision of, this is still what? Was it a two-run game? One-run game? Two-run game at the time? Like, it's tough. It's tough. And you got an inning left. You got one half inning left to hit. I guess with like the offense didn't score. They didn't do anything as they tend not to do very often. We'll talk about the offense in the third segment, but it, it really is a fine line. It really like the most important thing also about this entire decision is who else are you going to? This bullpen has been an absolute and utter train wreck. It has been a disaster. Of epic proportions. I cannot articulate enough how horrific the bullpen has been through 10 games. Okay? Easily the, the biggest sore spot of this team through 10 games. More than the offense, in my opinion. 
the bullpen has been brutal. So, like, Englert, he had a good first inning. You know he is capable of pitching multiple innings at a high level. And if you're not going to him, you're going to throw Foley out there, I guess. I like Jason Foley. You're going to throw Lang out there and hope he can find the strike zone, I guess. But, like, I... Slim, slim choices. Not a whole lot. So it, it, it's a fine line. I, I do disagree with the decision of, especially when he was allowing base runners to leave him out there to dry. I, I do. I, I don't. And hindsight's twenty twenty. That like, yes, that's like the big thing with all bullpen decisions is, oh, I would have. Well, like, of course he gave up a million runs. But like I, I genuinely did disagree, and you guys are very well aware that I, I have admitted earlier in the season uh, with, with a few outings that didn't go well out of the bullpen that I did agree with them, even though they, again, they didn't go well. So like I, I, I disagreed with it, but that being said, like I'm, I'm not getting red in the face over it. Like I'm not losing sleep over it because you, you don't have too many other choices. It's, oh man. Not a lot of choices, not a lot of uh, proven choices. And if you really are trying to save your pen for the rest of the series, I guess that kind of makes sense. You're really, it's just a situation where you're caught between a rock and a hard place. And that feels like the last seven years of Tigers baseball. All right, let's talk about this offense, which gives me so much joy on a daily basis. But first, I got to tell y'all about our friends over at Ultimate Pro Baseball GM, a game that actually does give me joy on literally a daily basis. Uh, if you haven't played the coolest game out there on the market right now, you need to, and that is Pro Baseball GM. Uh, if you think that you could be better than the Detroit Tigers current front office as a major league GM, as it turns out, you can give it a shot, and it might not be all that easy. It is truly an amazing game. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of the franchise, playing through seasons, leading your franchise and fans to glory. As you build a historic dynasty in the simulation you're responsible for, hiring the right coaching staff, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing through difficult personalities, injuries, navigating through free agency, call-ups, send-downs, etc., all the ups and downs of the season, all of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go when you want, where you want. It is awesome. Seriously, please try it out. Locked on Tigers listeners are also getting a 100% free boost to their franchise when they use promo code Locked On at the game store. So make sure to check it out to download this game. Please visit probaseballgm.com. You can scan the code on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube or look it up in the app store. That's probaseballgm.com. The ultimate baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Okay, let's talk about this offense. This offense that, as I stated, just brings me the utmost joy. Um, pretty inexcusable, I think is the word I want to use, performance by this baseball team at the plate. Let's start with as a team, and then we'll get individual, okay? Um, you had an opposing starter pitch 40 plus pitches in one inning one inning over 40 pitches you hit a three-run homer and you left the bases loaded Manoa still went four and a third with only those three runs against he walked five hitters only struck out three he had zero Command, pretty much the entire outing. He found it a little bit at the very end. But a, the first three innings, he had zero command of anything. 
the slider was nowhere near the strike zone anytime he threw it. Completely non-competitive to the point where Javi Baez was taking them. That's when you know it was non-competitive, okay? Javi Baez drew a walk in this baseball game. Like, I, you had... It's, it's mind-boggling to me that even when they work counts and they draw walks and they get hits and they're scoring some runs and they get a, a power stroke from Nick Maton first home run as a Detroit Tiger, like they finally have all that stuff in one inning and then silence for eight. I, And it's not like it was smooth sailing the rest of the game. Right? Like, he, he threw 94 pitches in four and a third. Half of those almost came in one inning. But, like, he had another 20-whatever pitch inning right after that. Right? The third, I'm pretty sure, is a 20-25 pitch inning. This team just is allergic, allergic to hitting with runners in scoring position. If there's a man on base, forget about it. They are not scoring. Allergic. So, it, unbelievably frustrating. And, like, this, this conversation was happening, uh, was formulating in my way too large head well before the Tigers blew this ball game. This was infuriating when it happened. This was infuriating when we left them loaded and only left that inning with three runs. And then they get one run back. And you go, wow. That was a like half hour long half inning where the opposing pitcher threw 42 whatever pitches and yet we have a two run lead right now with seven innings to play. And then it was a tie ball game and then we were losing. And then the game felt over. It, it it's just it's inexcusable really is the word. This was infuriating. Easily the biggest storyline of the game to me. The bullpen, we know, is going to be rocky. Matt Manning, not the best start in the world, not the worst start in the world. Fastball command was weak. Slider looked great. We'll, we'll, we'll try and build on it, assuming he's healthy. Like, there, there's stuff you can take out of that. This offense just continuing to have zero ability of having any timely hitting is mind-boggling. And we're 10 games in and we have 152 games left and we're, the schedule is going to get easier in May. All very, very true. Second half of May, at least. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's like how I say that. I feel like once an episode, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens, but I mean, golly, would it kill you <laughs> To score anyone in scoring position ever. A four, what? It, seriously, it was like a 42 pitch inning. You hit a three run homer, which scored some runs, and that was it. That was the extent. That was some of the worst command I've ever seen from Alec Manoa ever in his entire career collegiate or professional career very highly regarded prospect out of college like I, it, it's 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 mind-boggling to me if you want to go individual performances i guess we can do that to end the show here um riley green i, I did not think looked very good at all in this baseball game i think he's still got a lot of stuff to work on with uh with ground balls that's something that we talked about at length last season and something that he very much needs to address. Uh, some pretty timely and bad strikeouts in this game, too. Not a very good game uh, from him at all. Kerry Carpenter just gets a little unlucky. Has like 815 feet of outs in this ball game. He goes 0 for 3 with a walk, but had two fly balls to dead center. One was literally a home run that Kevin Kiermeyer, who does this for a living, robbed a homer. Uh, in dead center. So rough there. Uh, Javi Baez, you know, I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> I don't even want to say it because <laughs> it's just, it's so ridiculous. Like 
I, I, I don't want to play the, the like consolation prize game. Like Javi Baez with his 291 OPS, I thought this was the best his at bats have looked this season. He literally went over, but he had a walk and he was making contact. He didn't strike out. He, he, had, he actually worked it deep into a count on one, the fly ball, the fly out to center. So, like, there you go. Like, there, there's a participation trophy for you. Like, uh, Spencer Torkelson ha- had a good game. I, I thought he looked sharp. He goes two for four, um, had a heart and more hard contact. The double there, really good read off the bat. A really, really, like, nine or ten pitch at bat with Alec Manoa. Now, the result was a fly out, and it was a fastball right down the middle, and it should have been a 10-pitch at-bat that ended in a Torkelson crushed baseball, and it didn't. So that's something to work on. But all things considered, uh, I think that you can chalk that up as a pretty good performance by Torque. Nick Maton, obviously really good, but had a strikeout looking, which is, you know, Maton is interesting. We can kind of get more in-depth uh, on him on a later show, but um, he – has been walking a lot, which I love. And, and that's a great sign. I think that that shows that you're you're seeing the ball pretty well. Um, but doesn't have very many hits on the year. And on Sunday, went 0 for 4 with 4Ks. So, like, right before I was going to make that point, like, literally on Sunday's show, I was like, oh, I'm going to talk about Mayton today and talk about how, despite the low batting average, like, he's walking a lot and working a ton of counts. And he goes 0 for 4 with 4Ks. I was like, well, scratch that. So, kind of – Slightly talking about it here, uh, Jonathan Scope, uh, every day that goes by, I think we're a day closer to him being off this baseball team, and which is unfortunate. Like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. He's been nothing but a pro for the Tigers for the last three years, but I, I don't think that this is turning around at this point. It's been a, a, a year and change now. Um, Jake Rogers, I thought he caught a good game. So there you go. Had a hard hit ball at the end of the ball game there. Uh, uh, there you go. There's the quick rundown of everyone individually. But like, oh, 152 more. And like, I'm just, I'm so weird. Like, I, I still get excited. I wake up and I'm like, oh, the Tigers play tonight. Golly, what's wrong with me? Okay, that's all I got. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen. Every single day for your second listen, check on the Lockdown Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy strategies. Find Lockdown Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every single day. All right. I appreciate you all again, as I said at the beginning of the show, for uh, for tuning in consistently, even when the product on the field is not great. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and if I mean, clearly, if you're listening to this every every day, you're probably watching every day, and uh, we're we're uh, we're an uh, interesting breed, but we're gonna get through it, and we're gonna we're gonna talk ball. We're gonna try to find the good, and uh, hopefully, I, I don't know what win more than two games this year. All right. I really do appreciate y'all. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch y'all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.